Hey guys, Josh from the Ancient History Guy here. Hello and welcome to all. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Anyways, today we are going to be talking about the Bronze Age, specifically the transition between the Copper Age into the Bronze Age. So why and how did people switch from the Copper to Bronze? Without any further delay, let's get started. So to give you guys some context, for most of history, humans lived a nomadic lifestyle, noticeably traveling from place to place in order to avoid the harsh winters in the north and south. They followed the gigantic game animals along their migration paths. As the Ice Age waned, people continued their nomadic lifestyles, however they would still regularly assemble for religious festivals. These festivals were the highlight of most nomadic people's lives, with wild fermented grains being collected as part of the festivities. It's believed that the sheer amount of effort it took for them to collect all of these fermented grains was a deciding factor as to why humans began to settle down and farm, as the more grains they could reliably grow, the more beer they could create. As a result, people began to farm these grains. As people began to experiment with farming, they quickly realised that it was not as simple as planting a load of seeds and leaving nature to it. Instead, if they wanted a proper crop yield, they would have to regularly maintain the fields, noticeably having to clear large areas of land and provide channels for water to reach their crops. This meant that a lot of the successful farms were assembling near riverbanks, noticeably along the Tigris and Euphrates in Mesopotamia. Now the main tools that were available to the people of this time were stone ones. Stone had worked well for centuries, noticeably for hunting, where arrows and spears had allowed humans to rise to the top of the food chain. The problem was that actually making tools out of these materials was a little bit arduous. First you had to find a stone that you could A pick up, and B be soft enough that you could chip away with it with yet another stone that met the same criteria. Further making things even more arduous was the fact that after all of this, if the tool broke, they would then have to look for another suitable rock all over again. How much easier would it be if they could just find a material that was as strong as rock, but could also be easily fixed if broke? Now we don't exactly know how, but sometime around the late Neolithic, people began smelting lead, experimenting with the ideas of harnessing the strength of stone, whilst also being able to shape it to their own desires. Anyone who has held a bit of lead would know that it is, well, basically useless for anything that's requiring a good bashing. Lead is very easy to shape, and has a relatively low melting point, meaning much of the smelting was done over vast charcoal fires in the open air. However, what is interesting is the fact that around the same time, people were also beginning to smelt copper, a far stronger but still flimsy metal. With the knowledge from smelting lead, smelters began to melt copper into tools and weapons. Copper is a little bit harder to find than lead, noticeably needed to be dug out the ground. This resulted in vast mining operations, often in the form of open air tunnelling into the earth. The great thing about copper versus lead and stone was the fact that if it broke, which it often did, it could simply be melted down again and made anew. This was extremely useful to the new farmers who were now able to continue farming rather than go on the search for just the right stone to replace the one they had just broke. Copper is also a little bit more durable than lead, meaning that it could be smelted into shapes which could do a lot more damage. Copper solved many of the problems that the early human communities had, however it also began to cause more problems than it was worth. Most noticeable was the fact that copper is, well, a bit bendy. This meant that even though it could be easily re-smelted and forged into something useful again, this process had to be done a bit too regularly. There were other options, iron after all was readily available, however it was extremely difficult to get it to the correct heat where they could easily forge something out of it. As a result, people began experimenting, noticeably adding bits of other stones and rock and metal into copper, seeing if they could come up with metals that were both pliable enough to be forged into any shape, was also been strong enough that it did not require constant reforging. Eventually, someone hit gold, or more bronze. They found out that if you mix tin with copper, you could create a stronger and more reliable metal, bronze. Pretty soon, people began to prefer these new bronze tools, trying their best to get their hands on this new commodity. The only problem was that copper and tin, although easily excavated, are not found in the same area. This meant people would have to travel to get ignorance of these metals so they could then merge them in their hometown smelting forges. Pretty soon, reliable trade routes between these different areas of resources sprung up, with bronze quickly replacing copper as the main metal used by farmers and warriors. So what do I think of this? Well, I think it's a fascinating time in human history. I also think it's somewhat of an overlooked time period. From my research, I can find very little academic attention focused on the smelting of lead. This is, I think, a very vastly overlooked subject during the transition between the Stone Age and the Copper Age, as I think it's fairly apparent that the ancient humans were experimenting on what shapes were most useful for tools. Early humans definitely had a working knowledge of local stones, and I think they purposely chose lead as a way of figuring out how to smelt more complex metals such as copper. Ultimately, however, the transition from copper to bronze was the first real shot of adrenaline needed to kickstart ancient economies, and ultimately connect them to each other as a result. 
But those are just my thoughts. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and listening to our videos. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.